I'm going to share with you guys today. If you remember when we were in Dayton this year, we talked to Goose. I probably butchered his name up. But the guy that's the inventor of the DV Mega devices. He's got two devices, I believe, that are available right now. He's got the UHF radio that plugs onto a Raspberry Pi, hooks onto the GPIO pins, and there's a little standoff to secure it, and, there, and a small SMA adapter to hook your antenna on. This is very similar to uh, the DV access point and functionality. This one's only uh, UHF. There's not a two meter version of it that I'm aware of just yet. He also has another device that hooks onto an Arduino. It's, it's a shield, uh, basically the same functionality, but it's actually a dual band radio, which is, which is very cool. I, I'm not aware of any other little devices like that that are dual band, but it, these devices are fully supported by Jonathan Naylor's software, G4KLX software. Um, a lot of you guys are already running it. This is actually going to be my first time to run it, and uh, we'll go through it a little bit and talk about it in a few moments. When my device came, it came just like this. It's all assembled. It's got the SMA adapter on there and came with a little standoff with the screws in it to hook to the Raspberry Pi and then the little header connector to go to the GPIO pins. And uh, it's really easy to hook up. Let's go ahead and do it. Just unscrew the bottom screw and put it on the Raspberry Pi. As you can see, I've already plugged in my keyboard and my Wi-Fi dongle onto my Raspberry Pi because I'm going to need them in a little while. And the hole lines up perfectly. Not too tight. As you can see it's a nice fit. The board bumps up right against the edge of the video connector but it doesn't overlap it. So that, that's good, and everything has uh, got good clearance from the other components. Nothing to worry about there. You'll need a few other things as well. I stopped by the local Radio Shack and got robbed from one of these $8 SMA right angle adapters. I could have stuck the rubber duck on sideways, but I, I want it to be vertical. You'll need a little rubber duck antenna. I picked up this little dual bander at a ham fest sometime back. I don't even remember when. I've had it for a long time just sit in the drawer but anyway perfect for this application and an SD card for your image. When he mailed me the board he sent me an email that it had shipped. There was also a link in the email where he recommended the Western D-Star image. I went ahead and downloaded that and I burned it onto my SD card. I'm not going to go through all of the steps to configure the software. We'll hit the high points but I mostly wanted to focus on the device today. I'll go ahead and boot up with my card that I've pre-configured. Like I said, I burned it earlier and I've got it working and I've been actually talking on the device for, for a couple of days. We'll go through a few settings here, as basically on how it pertains to the device and talk about the device a little bit more and uh, we'll show it operating. I'm going to go ahead and VNC over here to mine and show you the settings on the software. A few moments ago I told you that they recommended that we use the Western D-Star image and, and I did just because I wanted to hurry up and get a jump start on it. The image is really nice. If you look at it, it's got all of the D-Star packages installed for you. There's information on here about setting up VNC, how to resize a partition, and I've already done all that. How to update the repeater software. So let's go ahead and run these configurators here. First thing we need to do is run the D-Star config one. And it's got a nice little GUI. I went ahead and put my call sign in. Typically on D-Star the B module is UHF. And G is always the gateway. And we set it up for simplex because we're using the same frequency to transmit and receive on. All these settings by the way are in the document on the website right here. Uh, Goose's site. Some of the gateway ones are not. I will make notes and put those on the show notes uh, that for you to be able to get to those as well. So there, there's not that much that we changed on here by default. Went skipped around here to modem. And you can see the DV Mega is fully supported as well as quite a few other things including our DVAP. 
but we're going to focus on the DB Mega here. Click configure and we want to pick this port. This is a serial port that's hooked up to the to the chip there. And the variant is radio. We're even though two meters and seventy centimeters are here, we want to pick seventy centimeters. This is cool. You just put your frequency in right there and your DV Omega will automatically use that frequency to send and receive. And the power is pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I mentioned earlier, but it's a 10 milliwatt device, same as the DVAP. And uh, you can adjust that down if you want, but uh, for 10 milliwatts, I think I'll leave mine on full power. That's all I did for here. And just be sure to click File and Save. I'm just going to click Exit because I don't want to change anything. Next thing we want to do is run the Gateway Configurator. The, there's two pieces of software that communicate with each other. One is the repeater, which is going to work for local if you were actually doing a repeater. And then the gateway is kind of the key here. That's the piece that's actually going to send the data out to the DSTAR network. And it actually is a really impressive piece of software. Let's take a look at it. The only things I changed here are uh, as I picked hotspot for my type. I put my call sign in and you can see it automatically puts a G there. I also put my latitude and longitude on there so DPRS will show where I am. Uh, I'm on band B for UHF. Type is homebrew. Uh, the repeater, I put my frequency in here because this is what's going to show up out there uh, as that's what my station is on. And a zero offset because it's not really a repeater. Same same latitude and longitude as before. And my address, Madison, Mississippi. Repeater 2 I ignored. IRCDDB is very important. It needs to be enabled. And for host name, be sure to go down and pick one of these IRC1 open quad ones. I just picked the first one. Put your call sign in as the username and no password unless you actually have an account registered on there. This will authenticate you and let you get on with your, your hotspot, your DV Mega here that we're putting together. DPRS is enabled and this is uh, one of the things that we tried in the past. This software will pass your GPS coordinates from, from your radio with GPS in it and you'll show up on the APRS network. I have D extra enabled, D plus is enabled. That, that's important to be able to get on the other reflectors. Without going into a lot of details, there's a couple of reflector systems, X reflectors, and then the regular D plus reflectors that you're familiar with. And if you don't enable this, you won't be able to get on those. So definitely turn that on and put your, uh, your call sign on there that whatever's registered on the DSTAR network, on the US Trust network right there. It's critical that you put that on or you're not gonna be able to get into uh, some of the reflectors that you're gonna want. And I, I just turned all those on by default. Changed my language to English US and that's it. Save it, exit. When you boot up, the gateway and the repeater software load up automatically. So you can run headless like we do with our DHAP or, or our homemade uh, DVAP pies and things like that. So same principle. They've just done the hard work for you. I'm going to go ahead and run it manually so I can show you. And I'll start up the gateway and the repeater. You see some messages scrolling across here. When, when it boots up normally, this, this is not enabled. But if you just run that for debugging purposes, it, it does enable the messages so you can see what happens. All right. Now, one thing you notice, there's no lights on here, so we don't really know from that if we're connected. So we're solely relying on the audible prompts from, from the repeater. I went ahead and I put my, my DV Mega in here just the same way I did with my DVAP in the previous episode. Uh, so go back and look at that if you need some instructions or shoot me a line. Let's go ahead and, and link up to something. So I'll go ahead and go here, go down to your call. And I'm going to link to, we'll link to, let's just do one Charlie. Link to. 
R E F zero zero one Charlie. Okay, and you can hear the little lady in the radio say we're linked up. And you can see over here on our gateway that we're linked. And there's our traffic right there. When you set up your radio to communicate on it, be sure to set the gateway and the repeater like you would if you were using a normal repeater. That, in that regard, it's a little bit different than the DVAP. When you shut down your Raspberry Pi, the next time you start it back up, all the software will run automatically and you'll be good to go. I didn't go through a lot of the, the minor setup stuff, the setting up the system, because we've done that in the past on a couple of different shows. So refer back to those. If you have trouble finding them, let me know, and I'll kind of steer you in the right direction. But the wiki is a great place to go search for that stuff. It's a really awesome device. I've had a fun time playing with it. If you're interested in these, check them out at Gigaparts. Gigapart sponsors the show, and, and they're also going to be the distributor for these in the U.S. Um, I believe they'll also carry the Arduino versions as well. So check them out on their website, gigaparts.com. Uh, for your instructions to get started, you can check those out at the link right here. And you can also get the Western D-Star image that I got started with at the link right here. All that information will also be in the show notes. Anyway, 73, and let me know if you get one of them how how you liked it. Oh, that was pretty cool.